Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, before the anticipated launch of the Galaxy Note 10, Samsung have released some details about its new processor, the Exynos 9825. So the questions before us today is, what is the Exynos 9825 and will it be faster than the Snapdragon 855? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So basically each year when Samsung launches its Note device, it generally uses the same processor that we found in the Galaxy S device that was released uh, six months previously. But this year things are slightly different. This year we have the new Exynos 9825 processor. Now the big difference between the 9825 and the 9820 that we found in the S10 is that the 9825 is built using a new fabrication process. So every processor when it's built has to go through a fabrication process where the circuitry is transferred onto the silicon and that's done at the nanometer level. So that's really Really, really small and the way they do that is using etching and by using light waves and in this particular case uh, Samsung have developed a new process using extreme ultraviolet light. So the uh, 9820 that we found in the S10 was built using an 8 nanometer process and the uh, 9825 is built using a 7 nanometer process and not the same process. So a different process that was used for the 8 nanometer uh, chip, the 9820, this is now using this new EUV process that Samsung have developed. And that's important for two reasons. The first reason is it does make this particular chip a little bit more efficient at seven nanometers compared to the 9820 at eight nanometers. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But also it shows that uh, Samsung's new process, this uh, extreme ultraviolet light process is ready for mass production. It's actually working and it's kind of the gateway down to five nanometers and down to three nanometers. So that is the kind of the investment that Samsung have put into this for the next generation of chips in 2020, 2021. We're going to be see using this extreme ultraviolet light process to make smaller and smaller processors. Now, when the Galaxy uh, S10 was launched, some devices came with the Snapdragon 855, which is a seven nanometer chip, and some came with the Exynos chip, which of course is an eight nanometer chip. And at the time, lots of people were like, well, that one nanometer make a huge difference. The Snapdragon's better because of the one nanometer. And actually, it's gonna be interesting now to see when we have the 9825 on seven nanometer, what the differences are in terms of performance and in terms of battery life. I don't think we're gonna see such a huge difference. Now we'll get to the performance differences between the 855 and the 9825 in just a moment, but let me tell you what Samsung have done with that extra capacity they've got because they've moved from eight nanometers to seven nanometers. First of all, what they've done is they've kept the same uh, 2 plus 2 plus 4 setups. So that's two Mongoose cores designed by Samsung, two Cortis A75 cores designed by ARM, four Cortis A55 cores designed by ARM. And this time what they've done is they've increased the clock frequency of the Cortis A75 cores. So the Mongoose cores are staying at the same clock frequency, the Cortis A55 cores are staying at the same clock frequency, but the Cortis A75 cores have had a slight clock boost. Now I'm guessing that's gonna be like 100 megahertz, 200 megahertz. I'm not expecting something greater than that. We'll find out uh, in due course. So what that means is that they haven't upped the uh, clock frequency of the Mongoose cores because those Mongoose cores really are battery hogs. They do eat away at the battery. And so what they've chosen to do is to tweak those middle cores, the Cortis A75, with the hope that when you start to do uh, tasks that need more than the Cortis A55, they migrate up onto the Cortis A75. Just that extra clock frequency will mean they will be just a bit longer before you have to call in the cores, the Mongoose cores, and actually really start hammering that battery. And likewise, the 9825 has the same GPU as the 9820, that's the Arm Mali uh, G76 MP12, but again, this time they've upped the clock frequency ever so slightly of the GPU core. No specifics yet available from Samsung, I'm guessing something in the range of 50 megahertz or something like that. So because of the clock speed increase of the Cortex A75 cores, and because of the clock increase on the GPU, the Exynos 9825 will be faster than the Exynos 9820. 20. However, only by a few percentage points, 1%, 2% or something like that. Interestingly, the currently leaked 
uh, benchmarks that are out on the internet don't show that performance increase. So it will be interesting to see when we get the real devices in our hands. But I don't think the uh, new 9825 processor will be faster than the Snapdragon 855 and certainly not faster than the Snapdragon 855 Plus. So it will be really interesting if I can get hold of a Note 10 with an Exynos processor and a Note 10 with a Snapdragon processor and run them through Speed Test G to see what the difference is between on these two devices. Now one last thing worth mentioning and that is the 9825 still has the same integrated 4G modem as the 9820. So when there are 5G versions of the Note 10, they will be using uh, Samsung's Exynos external mode. And when I mean external, I don't mean external to the phone, I mean external to the SOC. So it'll be another chip on the motherboard that the CPU will talk to, to provide those uh, 5G services. Okay, so there you have it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And well, I guess now we'll need to wait for the Note 10 to actually be launched and for us to get it in our hands. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.